What's going on, guys? It's going to be about UWorld today because I know that a lot of people are taking step one and step two, and there's a lot of details behind UWorld that you need to know if you want to stay sane. So hopefully I'm going to help you do that today. So let's get to it. Today is all about UWorld statistics, and I, again, was very frustrated by the lack of transparency about UWorld, so I figured I would make these series of videos to help you all in this process. The video that I'm making today is intended to educate and provide context to anyone who's starting to study for Step 1 and Step 2 CK, um, and even someone who is already in the process of studying for both of these exams. These are not easy exams. And everyone knows that UWorld is the number one resource that you use to study for both of these exams. And if you're an incoming medical student, or if you're a high school student, or if you're a medical student watching this, uh, UWorld is essentially the big program that is used um, in medical school as you start to prep for your board exams. And it's because the questions that UWorld has are very similar to, not very similar, but some, the most similar that you can find out there to the real thing that you'll see on test day. And it can be very intense at times and it becomes the bane of everyone's existence. And that's why I'm kind of making this video here today to show you guys a bit about the numbers behind my UWorld and why numbers by no means are everything. And and what you can learn from the numbers, uh, because I think you can use the numbers appropriately in UWorld, world, uh, especially in the terms of the grades that you're getting to guide how you study, and that can actually help you quite a bit uh, down the road. So without further ado, here's some of the basics. So you'll see that UWorld world for step one has about 3.1 thousand um, questions, and today I'm gonna be talking specifically about my step one UWorld. world. And within those, you'll see that there's a certain number that you can do, and ideally most people try to do all of them, and you'll see that I personally didn't get through all of them. But you will see that the amount I got correct was around 78%, and the amount incorrect was about 22%. I will let you know that it is not required to finish all of UWorld, world, but most people do, and you should, but not at the expense of quality. So what do I mean by that? If you are doing UWorld and you consistently are getting like 20%, finishing all of UWorld is not going to help you that much because if you are getting 20% all the time, it's much better for you to learn a little bit more quality of material rather than just doing a bunch of random questions. The problem with doing a bunch of questions is even if you feel a bit like you're understanding things, <clears throat> It really does take you to sit down quite a bit and only after you hit the 60, 65% mark would I say start doing more questions. Before that point, I think it's important to also focus on the parts that you are not getting right. And here is the other thing that's important. You, at, when you open up your world, you will almost always see these statistics. You'll see the bell curve and you'll see that the 50th percentile or the 48th is right there in the middle. And it's usually not always 50th because there's, it's always changing to accommodate everyone using the application. And you can also see that the 85th percentile is usually where I, is, is where I ended up. But the problem with these numbers is they cause you to boil your knowledge down to numbers. And I really, really don't want that to happen. I actually heard a quote the other day, is that when you study for extrinsic motivation, it actually gets rid of the intrinsic reward of studying. And that's primarily the problem with these numbers. If you go purely off of these numbers and you just try to increase your percentages, you will feel like there's always an iron brick on your shoulder. It's gonna feel so pressureful because you're gonna be like, oh my God, I'm still 30th percentile. I wanna get better scores. And you have boiled down to the point that you're being motivated entirely by a number as opposed to being motivated by learning for the sake of learning. And the problem with that is most of us came into medicine because we genuinely enjoyed science. And when you start focusing too much, I'm not saying that numbers are bad. I'm saying that when you start focusing too much on the numbers, that's when you actually start hurting yourself quite a bit, okay? And so that's the only reason I say, use these numbers to guide you, but don't use them to define you, okay? With that being said, here's an insight into the question bank. Um, I, for the most part, took 76 tests, and you'll see that each test, I, I made it into a 40 question block because on the real exam for step one, you have seven blocks of 40 question, and on step two CK, you have eight blocks of 40 questions. So I, every time I made a test, I made it 40 questions, and um, I just took it in an hour, just like the real thing. And the whole point of this is to show you that um, you should make sure that your tests 
are indicative of the real thing. But that's not always important. It's just important that your tests become like the real thing as you approach your test day, okay? That's the only reason I mention it because some people think that they need to do questions under time conditions. It's not always the case. You can do questions under time conditions to get a flow of the game. But near the end, like a week or two weeks out of your um, exam, you really should be doing questions just bam, 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 40 minutes, I mean 60 minutes, 40 questions, okay? Now let's go a bit into the details of my percent breakdown. So the percent breakdown is also something that UWorld provides you. And you can see that they provide it to you both in terms of like big concepts in medicine, like pathophysiology, physiology, immunology, anatomy, pathology, embryology. And you'll see that the number correct and number incorrect, as well as your percentile are shown here. This is really important because this is how you can actually guide your study. You can actually see that my percentile rank for microbiology was 72nd. That's actually pretty high. I personally thought micro was really hard for me. And being in the 70th percentile, I was like, oh, that's really good. And the reason for that was because of Sketchy. So I knew that I didn't actually need to allocate too much time to studying too much more micro. And instead of maybe I should focus a bit where like I wasn't as good, right? The other thing I also want you to realize is that percentile rank and the number of questions are very distinct things. Just because you're doing really poorly in a subject doesn't necessarily mean that you should focus on that subject as much. Because for example, look at the number of questions there were on like physiology. There were 240 questions on physiology and there's only 38 questions on embryology, right? So in my mind, even though in theory, I have a decent percentile in embryology and my, and my percentile in pathophysiology is much higher, it still makes more sense to focus on physiology and pathophysiology because there's just so many more questions that show up in these two domains than do in embryology, right? Like chances are if the total amount of questions I had were only 40 through the 2000 something that I did on the real day, you'll see maybe a couple questions on embryology. But if you had to, you know, bet your marbles, it's probably a better bet to study a little bit more physiology and pathophysiology than it would be embryology just because it doesn't seem to show up as frequently. That's one way to utilize this. But you'll see that here, everything is broken down by big concepts like microbiology, embryology. UWorld also breaks things down in terms of organ system. And that's kind of what I've shown you here. They have it broken down by male reproductive system, female reproductive system, uh, pulmonary and critical care, uh, ophthalmology. And again, here too, you wanna use the percentile rank to guide your studying. So for example, I clearly suck at poisoning. I also suck at uh, male reproductive uh, system. Uh, and if I had to put my marble somewhere, it probably would be better idea to study renal, right? Look at how many questions renal has, 136, instead of studying like ENT. ENT did not have that many questions, nor did, for example, like poisoning. Poisoning had like 11 questions, right? So use the number of questions in a particular block to guide your studying. For example, in this case, it's very obvious to me that if I were to study anything, it would probably be renal just because it shows up a lot. And also because my percentile rank in that is pretty low. Would I study poisoning? I mean, I have a low percentile rank, but there's only 11 questions in it, so why would I, you know? So with, that's kind of how I was using these numbers. But again, remember to understand that the more you focus on the numbers, the more you do, I'm not saying don't entirely, don't focus on the numbers at all, but I'm just saying the more you do, the more toxic it can become, and this is coming from someone who has experienced it, the more toxic it becomes because you define yourself by these numbers. And then instead of studying, you're just consistently thinking, how do I get the right answer? How do I find the, how do I get higher percentiles? And that's not the best way um, to approach studying for this, at least not in my opinion. I think the best way would be to say like, okay, well, I suck at poisoning. How can I learn a bit more about that? Um, approach it with a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. In the next video, I will be going over my trends uh, overall in UWorld. Like how did I start? How did I end? How should you um, define it? I also wanna go over this thing which I'm calling the pre rack effect, which is very interesting and something that I think a lot of people go through in UWorld that I don't think is talked about. So stay tuned for that. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you wanna know more about in UWorld. And I thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much, guys. Peace.